Hey, what's up guys? Hope y'all doing good this morning. Thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. And um, hey, I got to tell you a quick story before we get started because I'm dragging a little bit this morning. Um, you know, we got three boys here at the house. We got Elijah, who's three and a half, and uh, we got Elliot, who's eight, and Owen, who's 12. So you can imagine three boys <laughs> that age are in the house. There's all types of stuff going on. But anyway, three or four days ago, Elijah came down with a stomach bug woke up two o'clock in the morning was thrown up in his bed everywhere had to clean that up and then last night um elliot and owen at, at 2 30 in the morning elliot woke up and he couldn't make it to the uh bathroom so he threw up all over the floor uh in the hallway of the bedroom and then that woke uh owen up who as soon as he got out of bed he started throwing up so he threw up all over the floor on the way to the bedroom and then Elijah, that woke Elijah up, and he didn't know what was going on. And then our dog, Sage, was all up there, and Sage was trying to eat it off the floor. And Elijah was, like, upset because the boys were throwing up. So I was up at 2.30 in the morning cleaning that throw up. So it's been it's a dragging a little bit this morning. So anyway, we're going to get into this tip today. Um, sort of have a discussion on uh, bass fishing during the spawn time of the year. Just sort of having a... You know, just just a little conversation about it, it's sort of wide ranging. And one thing I'd suggest, um, if you guys missed it last night, some of you guys may have seen it, but Johnny and I did our weekly live podcast last night on this very subject about fishing during the spawn. A lot of interesting information on that. It's like an hour and a half long. If you guys want to check it out, um, I'll put a link in the description uh, to the, uh, uh, the uh, podcast we had last night on Fish the Moment Live. So check that out. It's pretty interesting. So, but anyway, let's talk a little bit about the spawn here. Just what I want to try to do is I just want to try to share with you guys some highlights that I've learned from fishing over 40 different spawning seasons. I mean, I've been, I've been bass fishing tournaments for over 40 years, so I've had a chance to actually fish through 40 different spawn cycles, and that's a lot, you know, so I've learned quite a bit about, you know, bass movement, behavior, myths around the whole thing, and I'll, I'm going to and this is something we could talk about forever, but I just want to go over some highlights with you guys. First of all, you know, there's a lot of myths surrounding the spawn time of the year. Well, first of all, let me get into this. I'm going to, talk, I'm going to say something about the ethics. I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm against fishing for visible bedding fish, for, for visible bedding fish. I think that from a conservation standpoint, it's good for the fish to let them go through their spawning cycle undisturbed. They have enough negatives against them, and particularly tournaments. I wish tournament directors would stop putting tournaments on top of the prime spawn time of the year. Just just don't put any tournaments for like a two to three week period during the key peak spawning times, wherever it is on the lake that you're fishing. And we all just need to let them spawn. I, that's, so I just want to get that out of the way. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about the myths around spawning. Uh, the biggest myths that, that exist around spawning out there are that, you know, bass start spawning when the water temperature is 60 degrees and, and it's the first full moon once it reaches 60 degrees. I've heard this forever and ever. And yeah, there are some bass spawning during that particular uh, situation, but that isn't the main factor that triggers it. I don't think most people realize how... Um, unpredictable and how broad the spawning season is all over the country and it varies from your region to region what you're going to find in general the farther south that you got that you go like into texas the gulf coast states florida your spawning season actually lingers longer than it is as the far you go farther north the farther north you go it gets shorter so, for example, in Florida, you know, they can start spawning in December, and I've seen them spawning up into late April, where here in Missouri, we have, like, most of the time, like a two- or three-week period where the big part of the spawn takes place. So, it's sort of relative to your area there. The things that influence the spawn are stability, um, water stability. When you, it's water, it's a, well, it's actually a combination. It's a combination of water stability and weather pattern stability over anything else, over moon phase, over water temperature, whatever. Biologically, these bass, when that, the, when those daylight hours get to be a certain length, that's the thing that triggers them to want to move up and start looking for areas to spawn. And then the thing that actually gets them to spawn is a combination of stable weather and, and stable water conditions. 
for example, say like right now across the country, there's a lot of places around the country that the bass are spawning. They maybe just got done spawning or they're getting ready to spawn. A lot of those factors, if you have like a, a series of cold fronts that come in prior to when they normally start spawning, that's going to knock those fish back. And, in, and and vice versa, if you have a situation where you have extremely stable weather, you've got warm weather and you've got little to no wind, that's going to accelerate those fish to spawn sooner. The same with water level. Water level has a huge impact on uh, you know when bass spawn. If you have a combination of, of stable weather and stable water level, then you're going to have traditional spawn times take place. But if you've got abnormally warm weather, if you've got or abnormally cold weather, or if you have water levels that are rising and falling, uh, you know, fairly rapidly, that's going to affect the spawn, and that's going to either delay that spawn, or it's going to make them spawn earlier, or it's going to maybe not make them spawn at all. If you have a situation, say for example, the lake comes up 20 or 30 foot, which it does around this part of the country, Bull Shoals Lake just down the road from my house, it'll, it'll come up 30 feet sometime in the springtime of the year, just in a matter of a week or so. And when you have a situation like that, um, a lot of those times those bass either put off spawning to later in the late in the spring, or they just absorb their eggs and don't spawn at all. And the way that you can tell this, that these spawns don't take place at the same time, is look at the bass that you guys catch, say, in October and November. I've caught bass that are two inches long in October, and I've caught bass that are six or seven inches long in October. What that tells me is that some bass may have spawned as late as June, even in this part of the country, or as early as March. So this whole misconception of the time frame that bass spawn is very vague and it's based on a lot of different variables. So pay close attention to your weather patterns and water conditions on that. Second, let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, fishing during the spawn time of the year. Just give you guys a few tips for that. Again, right off the bat, I'm going to, I'm going to just tell you guys that I'm not going to give any tips on how to catch visible bedding fish because that's just something that I don't, I don't want to endorse that. I just, I just feel that's something that if you can possibly get away from, from it, just don't do it. And yeah, I've done it and it's a blast. I mean, it's fun to pitch in there and watch a bass circle around and, and they eat your tube. I mean, I, nobody can deny that, but I try to steer away from that. But if you fish in the spring, even if you can't see those bass, you're catching, you're fishing for bed and fish. I mean, Maybe not actual spawning because the, the time that the bass are actually on their beds laying eggs is a short period of time. When I talk about the spawning season, I'm talking about when these bass move out of their staging areas into the flatter areas and they start scouting for beds. They're looking around, they're looking for the optimum area to put to, to build nests in. Um, they're, they're looking for the areas that give them the best chance to have a successful spawn. That may take weeks. And once they do spawn, a lot of times they'll hang in those same areas for several weeks as well. So during, so you've actually got maybe a, a month period that I consider the spawning season. And a couple of different things, that I'll, quick tips I'm going to give you, because like I said, we could talk for hours about this, is the areas and techniques that you want to use for spawning bass. Again, remember when I talk about spawning bass, I'm not talking about bass laying eggs. I'm talking about the spawning cycle type thing. When those fish are in that mode of wanting to spawn, it, a lot of it depends on the lake that you've got and it depends on the species of bass that you got. Because if you're on, I divide it up into three different categories, a highland reservoir, lowland reservoirs, and natural bodies of water. Let's start off quick, real quick with natural bodies of water. Natural bodies of water, like I said, um, you're talking about smallmouth up north, you're talking about largemouth down south. When you're on a natural body of water, um, the spawning cycle in the south revolves a lot around flatter stuff, flatter vegetation, or grass, flatter ve vegetation, those type of areas, very weather dependent. Um, you're looking for sandy type bottoms in and around vegetation where they can get in and spawn. Those are the key areas. Up north, when you're dealing with smallmouth, these smallmouth tend to spawn a lot deeper. They're on main lake flats. They don't really have to get back into coves. They're looking around to spawn around any type of bigger boulder, any type of bigger rock. And those they like to get in around those main lake flats. 
that have a mixture of gravel and rock. So that's where I look for them in deeper water, in that six to 10 foot of water. Now the highland and lowland reservoirs where most people fish, most highland reservoirs have a mix of water clarities. You've got, traditionally you have cleaner water on the lower end of the lake, gets a little bit more stained as you go up the lake. And the bank angles change too. Most of the time the bank angles begin to flatten out as you get up the lake a little bit. If you've got a highland reservoir, most of the time you're dealing with three different species of fish, spotted bass, largemouth, and smallmouth bass. Tradi traditionally during the springtime of the year, what I li like to look for on a lake that has spotted bass and smallmouth bass, I like to go back into the steeper coves, like the 45 degree angle type bank coves. And I like to fish in that, say to that three to 10 foot of water, right on those straight banks, on those steeper bank coves leading to the back you'll find that those smallmouth and the spotted bass, particularly the bigger ones, they like to set up in that four to 10 foot of water on the sides of the coves um, during the, the, the peak period of the spawn. The smaller bass will spawn, you know, shallower on the flatter stuff, maybe to the back end. Say for, for example, Table Rock Lake here in Missouri, you'll catch your big Kentuckys um, in like that six to 10 foot of water during the spawn and you'll catch the 13 and 14 inchers, the ones that you can look up there in three foot of water and see. And vice versa, the largemouth, they tend to, they want to spawn more on the flatter banks around, you know, any type of object like a wood, a dock, a piece of, you know, a stump, something like that. They're normally going to spawn that. So when I'm looking for those fish in the spawning time of the year, you know, on a highland reservoir, I'm in the coves all the time. I'm fishing whatever available cover is within those coves. Now the lowland reservoirs, take for example, a lake like uh, Lake Eufaula in Alabama, which is a lowland impoundment. Normally on a lowland lake, it's more largemouth oriented. The water's a little bit more stained. So the fish don't have the options to set up in a variety of water depths. On a clear water lake, during the peak part of the spawn, you may have bass using two to 10 or deeper foot of water and in a lowland reservoir these fish are going to be shallower because the water's dirty the banks flatter you've got bank grass docks that type of stuff so you need to concentrate your efforts in say less than four foot of water <clears throat> around some type of shallow bank cover not necessarily in the coves but you know protected banks backs of bays even on the main lake you know if you've got the right type of to bank composition so the places these fish use in the springtime of the year are dependent upon a lot of different variables on the type of lake, water clarity, water level, all that type of stuff. So um, <clears throat> let me give you guys one, one I'll give you, I'm going to give you guys two examples of, of uh, a unique spawn time situation. Um, I remember I was fishing, practicing for a tournament on Tabor Rock Lake. Uh, this has been quite a few years ago. And I was down there like two weeks before the tournament started and the fish were, they were bedding everywhere. You could see them on the nests everywhere. And I was going down this one large cove and I was, I was just fishing. I was throwing a shaky head, just fishing. And I was also looking for beds and I made a long cast up in front of me about, you know, five foot off the bank and I caught a five pounder and this five pounder had a big black spot on the top of its head and on the side of its body, really unique looking fish. And I got over there to where the fish bit and there was a stump underwater and there was a big bed. So obviously I, I just, by random chance, I threw my shaky head on that bed and that fish hit it. So two weeks later, I said so that fish was on the bed spawning, obviously, cause it was super fat. I came back to that tournament two weeks later and uh, the fish were done spawning. There wasn't hardly anything on the beds. And I got on a, a crankbait bite in the tournament where I was just paralleling, uh, you know, steeper banks, 45 degree angle banks <coughs> with a crankbait. <coughs> Excuse me. So I went back on that same bank that I caught the five pounder on because it was sort of set up at that angle over there. And I got up to that area where I caught that five pounder two weeks ago. And, uh, on the, and I threw that crankbait parallel about 15 feet in front of that stump and I caught that same fish, that same five pounder with the black spot on it two weeks after it was on the bed. So these fish, that's the prime example of what I'm saying, these fish, it's not like they move up and spawn and go back to deep water. They will hang out and there's, it's, it's real abstract to, to what uh, you know gets these fish going. And uh, one other quick story, I'm gonna tell you guys a story about when Dean Rojas set that record of 45 pounds, two ounces 
um, that Lake Toho <coughs> spawning bass. These were visible bed fish. In that particular tournament, um, we the weather in practice we had was pretty bad. It was windy, north wind. It was you know cold a little bit. And uh, Toho is normally tough. Normally, if you catch 12, 13 pounds of Toho, <coughs> you've had a decent day. <coughs> You're going to be in check range. So. I got on the jerkbait bite offshore in the offshore hydrilla and I was catching them pretty good. I was, I was feeling really good about the tournament. And the last day of practice, um, it had been sort of cold and nasty. And that last day of practice, we had a warm front come through and it, the temperature got up to like the 85 degrees. There wasn't a breath of wind on the lake all day long. And that sun just baked down on that calm water. And the first day of the tournament, the same deal, 85 degrees, the sun baked down that warm water, not a breath of wind. It was like a glass. It was so smooth. And I came in that first day of practice, that first day of the tournament, and I had a pretty decent bag, what I thought, 14 or 15 pounds. And I pull up to weigh in, and Brent Chapman's dad was at that tournament. He walked down to my boat, and he goes, well, how'd you do, Randy? I said, I did pretty good. I got about 14 or 15 pounds. And I go, what's the leading? And I'm taking my life jacket off, and he goes, 45 pounds, two ounces. And I, I said, I, I just started, I just chuckled and said, you know, yeah. I go, I said, I go, yeah, what's leading the tournament? And he goes, 45 pounds. And I go, I still didn't believe him. I said, no, come on, what's leading? He goes, Randy, Dean Rojas had 45 pounds, two ounces. And there was three 40 pound plus bags caught in that tournament. And what had happened, it was a perfect storm. You know, everything came together at the right time. The weather patterns you know, the time of year, everything came together and those giants moved up overnight and made beds and started bedding. That's the way it is in the springtime of the year. The springtime of the year, when I, one thing I want to leave you guys with, it's, it's very abstract, it's unpredictable, um, there's no parameters on it. The only thing you do know <clears throat> is the bass are shallow and they're biting. So um, anyway, that's just a sort of a little discussion here on bass fishing and the spawn. One thing I will leave you with as far as wrapping this video up is the best lures to fish this time of year when those fish are getting ready to spawn or spawning or just got done spawning are slow falling bottom bouncing lures. You want to go light. You want to throw your light jigs no more than a quarter of an ounce when you're throwing your soft plastic uh, creature baits or soft, soft plastic uh, stick baits. Never go over an eighth of an ounce. Just try to stay weightless or a sixteenth of an ounce you'll get a lot more bites on a light, soft uh, plastic or jig in this time of year. So there it is, guys. A little bit of talk on the springtime of the year. Man, shoot me your comments. If you guys got some more questions on it, I'd be try glad to try to answer it. It's a pretty vast topic. We'll be talking about it a lot more probably in some upcoming videos um, over the next couple weeks because it's a lot, of, lot to talk about during the spring here. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Much appreciated, and we'll be back soon with another one.